Hi, this is Steve. This is another video in the series on how to make generative art. In this video, we're going to be creating our own functions. There are several reasons to create your own functions. Uh, one, you don't want to repeat something in your code. Two, you want to make your code more tidy. And a third possibility is you want to reuse some of that code in another program. So to start with, I've made a little program that combines some of the things we've done in previous videos. And I've got all of this stuff in setup right now, but I want to move some of this stuff into functions. So right now, setup is quite long. So for each grid space, there's a choice being made. Choice number one is a rectangle. Uh, this one's a circle. Uh, the triangle is not too long. It's just this. But then we get to this, the leaf. And it's this long. So there might be a good reason to move all of this to its own function. So let's pause this and we'll grab all of this down to here and we'll cut it and then we'll go down here and we'll do function make leaf and we need the parentheses and then a curly bracket and then we can paste all of that in here and then we don't need to say leaf because we know it's a leaf We'll go back up to here where we pulled it from and we just need to say make leaf and we should see that it does exactly the same thing. Now let's do the same thing. This one is making the flower. So that's kind of long. So let's pull that out, cut all this. We'll go down here. We can put it right here and we'll say function make flower like this, so and paste now here we just say make flower and then we've got our rotated lines that's this thing right here so let's pull all of that out I think it stops here and we'll do function rotate lines and like so and let's just make sure if I click on this no I grabbed uh, one too many uh, curly brackets so let's get rid of one of these and then that means I need to add back a curly bracket over here I think and then we'll hit enter and this one was make uh, no what did I call it rotate lines Rotate lines and should still work. Oh, something's wrong. Ah, I said line. Let's change this to lines. There we go. So if we look at this, now this section is quite a bit shorter. Uh, let's make it even more succinct. We can either take all of this and maybe call it make grid, or we could just take the part that's within here with all the choices and we could put that somewhere else. Let's keep this here and we'll just move this part from here. And we could call it grid space or tile. Let's say make tile. And we'll pull all of this out and not sure where I go to. Is it this? I think it's I think it's here. So we'll cut that and we'll put that here. Function make tile and open curly brackets and paste. And let's make sure. Yep. If you hadn't noticed this before, if I click on this curly bracket, it highlights this other curly bracket that matches it. So that way I know I have the right number of curly brackets. And I've already put the function call right here. So this still should work. Very good. And now if you look at the setup, it's quite short. And then we can do the make tile and you'll see that has just all the choices and that's pretty short. And then we have each choice, rotate lines, make flower. Let's uh, tidy the code here. There we go. 
And also at the bottom is our get color function. This is a function I wrote a while back. So up here in the setup, right here, it's getting color, it's sending a color between zero and four to the get color function. And it's coming up with values for H, S, and B. And then we can return up to this point, and then we fill with H, S, B. Besides making different functions, another way we can tidy our code is adding additional JavaScript files. If I click on here, you'll see that right now I'm just using one JavaScript file called Sketch. But I can add a new file, and let's call it patterns.js. And I'm going to take all of my patterns, the make flower, the rotate lines, and the make leaf. Let's cut all of that out. Down to here, I'll cut it. Then I'll go to my new function, paste it. And now there's one other thing we need to do. We have to go to the index and then scroll down to where it says sketch. And we're going to copy this, paste it, and then replace this with patterns. And this will ensure that the code will be able to recognize this new JavaScript file that we added. So now if we hit play, we get the same result. Right now our code is pretty simple, but as the code gets more complex, you'll see that adding additional JavaScript files makes sense. Continuing with that make color part, where we're sending a value and getting something back. Let's look at that a little more. So in this example, this doesn't have any art in it. Uh, I'm just converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. So right now I've got Fahrenheit is 50 Celsius, and I've got a formula here. And right now there's no function. So I hit start and I get a value of 10. Now, if I wanted this to be a function, I could copy this and put it down here. I've actually already done that. So let's comment this out and comment this in. So I'm calling the Celsius 1 function. I'm sending the 50 to this function. That 50 is being received into this variable F2, and then that is being used in this formula. C is the result of that formula. It goes back here and we print C. Another way of doing this is we'll comment this out and comment this in. This one, we say C equals Celsius 2 F. So this is calling the Celsius function. I've got another one down here. But we're taking the value of this function and making it C. If we go down here to this function, we'll see that we're receiving the value from above, we're putting it into the formula, and then we're using this word return. So this is the first time you're seeing return, it's a statement, and it is saying return the value of this formula back to this that called it, and now we're gonna put that value into C. So that gives us the same result, and it's a perfectly valid way of calling a function. I prefer using this way of calling a function, but you can use whichever one you want. I also want to mention an alternative to traditional functions. There's an alternate way of doing a function called an arrow function. I don't want to go into too much detail about this because I usually use the traditional way of doing functions. But in the arrow function, this is the name of the function. This is the arguments being passed into the function, also called a parameter. And then this is the statement that would normally be in a curly bracket, which you could put in a curly bracket. Uh, you'll recognize an arrow function because it has this arrow right here. So if you see something like this in someone's code, you'll know that that's an arrow function and is an alternative way of making a function. I'm also gonna to provide to you a separate code, arrow function example three, which goes over different ways of using the arrow functions. I'll save this example and put a link in the video description. I wanted to show you one more example of sending a value to a function and also reusing a function from one program to another. This is my paper texture function. I use this function fairly often, copying it from one program to another. 
and it's receiving a texture type because this does two different texture types. It does a blurring texture and it does a paper texture. Both of them are grabbing a colored pixel from the canvas, then creating a curve of that color. But the paper texture, the curve is very thin and the blurring, the curve is thick but has a lot of transparency to it. Let me hit play, you'll see an example that has no texture at all. And then I can hit P for paper texture and it'll redraw and then add some paper texture. Or I can hit B for blur and it'll redraw it and then blur the canvas. There we go. So for each of these, they have a different number of curves that are being drawn. They're at different stroke weights and they're at different alphas. As your programs become more sophisticated, more complicated, they're gonna get longer, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to break things up into functions. This one's a bit short, that's all for today. In the next video, we're gonna talk about buffer canvases or the create graphics function. If you like this video, give it a like. Comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.